Hi guys and welcome to another pick a card reading. Today's reading <laughs> is a funny one because I actually woke up with it this morning. Um, I wasn't planning on doing one today and I woke up and the first thing that I heard was the title, How to Turn the Frown Upside Down and I thought, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure that's what I should be doing? Um, so I'm going with it and we're going to see what comes out and how it goes but yeah, apparently this is what's needed today. So first of all, before I get started, I'm sorry that you're frowning. I'm sorry that you're frowning. But I want you to remember two things. I'll give yourself credit for two things. One being, we're still going through a lot, right? There's still a lot going on. Um, and I don't just mean that in an obvious sense, in the, you know, externally, people's worlds have been turned upside down. But also I think people have had a lot of painful realizations this year and epiphanies that have been difficult to digest. And it's not gonna be something where we're just gonna snap back into balance again. It's gonna take some time. So give yourself credit for the fact that we're in unknown territory, right? But also the fact that you're watching videos like this tells me everything I need to know about you because you're taking responsibility for your own happiness and you're trying. <laughs> Even if you don't get it right the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, it doesn't matter because you're still trying and eventually all the trying that you're doing is gonna work, right? So give yourself more credit for trying. Um, okay, so I've got three piles to choose from. Just bear in mind that it won't resonate for everyone. Three piles, we've got rainbow, pink, and rose. So I'm just gonna give you a minute to tune in and pick which one most resonates for you. They are all quite different today. Um, so just bear that in mind. Okay, so if you need more time, just pause the video and I'm gonna start with rainbow. Okay, so if you chose rainbow, what's, first of all, what is causing the frown? What is causing the frown? Okay, so this is really gonna depend on which side of this you're on, but I will say this, it takes two to tango, right? <laughs> and I don't feel like anyone is without some level of responsibility in making a situation the way that it is. Um, so what's causing the frown? We've got justice with the fool and receptive. Okay, so I feel like what's causing your frown is the fact that something hasn't been made right. Something hasn't been made fair. Something could feel quite unjust. Something, something's, I think something's eating away at you because it's not been balanced or because it's not resolved itself. Now, again, this is really going to depend on which side of this you're on. Some of you, some of you, this is about your own conscience. Now, what's interesting to me is that I actually talked about this on Instagram yesterday and now it's kind of come out in this reading. That I was talking about how I quite like it when spirit calls me out on things. When I get things wrong, I like it when they point at, point at it and kind of go, you might want to take another look at that. You're not quite getting that right. And I like that because it gives me the opportunity then to do something about it and to change it. It's brought something into my awareness that I originally couldn't see and now I can make changes that align with doing a little bit better, right? And for some of you, that might be the situation that you're in. The, the reason why you're frowning is maybe because your conscience is telling you to make something right. And because that hasn't happened yet, it's eating away at you. It's kind of eating away at you and it won't leave you alone. For others of you, you might feel like someone else has wronged you in some kind of a way and you are frowning because you don't feel like that's fair or you don't feel um, like you've been respected or you don't feel like you've been acknowledged or your pain hasn't been acknowledged in some kind of a way. 
and it could be just bringing you down. I do feel like something is unresolved though and I think that's why you could be feeling like frowning because it's you just want to wipe the slate clean is what I'm get, getting with that the hands right it's almost like you just want to you just want a new clean slate a fresh start but I think you have this awareness that it's going to take maybe two parties in order to do that because we've got the scales We've got the hands and then we've got the sun and the moon in the background so i kind of get the feeling like like two it's going to require two parties to work something out and this is what's making you frown because either for some of you it could be that someone's not playing fair with you maybe you're trying to balance something out but it's like the other person's not working with you and that's you know that's creating this disruption because you know you can only control your own actions and your own behavior and if the other person's not willing to work with you there's nothing you can really do about that other than acceptance right so if you are in that type of situation where you feel like you've put in effort into something to resolve it or to balance it out and it's not working because the other party is not playing fair then i feel like this is where finding closure on your own or forgiveness without an apology comes into play, which is, I know, <laughs> one of the hardest things to do when it comes to other people, I think. It's one of the hardest, and it's not gonna be something that you're gonna be able to do, I think, overnight. It's gonna take time, depending on the circumstances. But this really does come down to, I think, whichever way you look at your situation, it comes down to being the bigger person because you're the bigger person if you choose to apologize and own up to your own mistakes and your own behavior. And you're also the bigger person if you choose to forgive someone who hasn't apologized or who's let you down in the past and has never really tried to resolve things with you. You're a bigger person in both of those circumstances. So you're being prompted to do that, I think. There's something risky though about this. There's something risky, something about taking a risk I think um, I think if you are someone that is trying to make something right with someone else, I feel like there's something quite risky about that because you're worried about how the other person is going to react if you try and do that. And in that situation, I feel like it's more a case of, okay, this really isn't about how the other person reacts. This is just about, you know, doing the right thing, being the bigger person um clearing my own conscience but also doing something for someone else that might help them even if they don't accept it so <clears throat> there's that but if it's the other situation then i feel like it's it's about it clears your conscience to forgive someone who isn't sorry or who hasn't apologized and shown up in that sense because it's it's it makes you I think that makes you quite strong you know that you're kind of looking at someone and okay they've not owned up to their mistakes they've not apologized to you they've not sorted something out with you they're not willing to work with you in that way and you're still being the bigger person and showing them forgiveness. And that's very kind, it's very empathetic. And ultimately that's gonna sit better with you than carrying around a grudge that's very heavy and just ultimately drags down your energy. So this, what's making you frown, I think, is the fact that one way or another, something hasn't been resolved, something hasn't been balanced or hasn't balanced itself out. And I think you're wanting to kind of wipe the slate clean and start again and clear your conscience or well clear your conscience either way by either forgiving someone or apologizing to someone um yeah it's this is very much about kind of owning up to mistakes or um forgiving someone who hasn't owned up to their mistakes because in terms of what's going to turn the frown upside down <laughs> we've got the seven of swords which is a very funny card to come out because if that is typically, I mean, you don't even, I'm just gonna show you, right? This guy is obviously up to no good. He's kind of he's skulking around with a hood on, you know, and this crow is at the front skulking away, which always makes me think of spirit. <laughs> Cause they get, I often see crows as a sign that they're around. 
um, but they do, it's like they get very loud when something's not being handled properly. Just like we would, right? <laughs> if someone was doing something they shouldn't be doing or something offensive or insulting, we call people out on that, right? Um, and spirit works very much the same way, pointing out our own sort of bad behavior. So I feel like in terms of what's gonna turn the frown upside down, it really is kind of just laying the cards on the table and just saying, okay, you know what? I got this wrong. I got this wrong, I'm sorry. I should have done better. Or it's hearing someone out if they're trying to do that with you. If someone is trying to make something right with you, it's being receptive to that if that happens, you know? It's remaining open, listening, you know? Listening to understand rather than to judge because <clears throat> I think it's very easy to look at a situation that hurts us in life and immediately jump to a conclusion that that person is this or that person is that or, you know, that situation, it's black and white. There's no gray area, but life is full of gray areas and people are full of gray areas. And I just think that in your situation, if you're the one that's been maybe let down, hurt, betrayed, whatever it might be, and someone's trying to apologize to you and trying to make things right with you, hear them out because we're human. We're human. It doesn't mean you have to necessarily have a new beginning with that person, that's up to you. Whatever you want to do is fine. But I think just in terms of resolving the situation, I think that's gonna be something that would make you feel better. It would make you feel better. It would make you feel more balanced. But I think, you know, if it requires a lot of honest, open communication about where things have gone a bit wrong and hearing someone out if they want to explain themselves to you, to clear the air with you. What you do with that after is up to you, but give people the chance to do that. And obviously if that's not the case, if someone isn't showing up for you and apologizing or expressing themselves, it's it comes down to recognizing why someone may be behaving in that way, you know? Going beneath the surface, not seeing it as some kind of personal attack against you, but trying to understand why that person reacts that way, where that might be coming from. And again, you can't, <laughs> you're not gonna necessarily be able to know the whole truth because you'd have to talk to that person, get to know them properly for that to be the case. But you can at the very least understand that there are other possibilities as to why someone acts this way. That it's not cut and dry. It's almost never cut and dry, right? There's always more going on as to why people act in the way that they do and maybe trying to understand why that might be the case rather than just kind of immediately labeling someone as something because of something they may have gotten a bit wrong. So we've got recognition as well. So yeah, recognize, I feel like, first of all, recognizing that we are all human, <laughs> recognizing that we're all human, that we all get it wrong, that we all make mistakes, that we're all a bit messy, that none of us are perfect, right? And again, empathizing with that fact, regardless of the circumstances. Um, and also recognizing our own behavior and what we may have contributed to a situation to make it the way that it is. And not just having the awareness of that, but then owning up to it and actually doing something to change it. Um, doing the best that we can. And with elephant, this is funny, this is all about um, obstacles, but it says to bring into balance trust. So I think as well, if you've had a bad experience where there's been some sort of deception, lies, betrayal, is not then taking that experience and labeling every other experience the same because we, I think it's very easy to do that. And especially if that's all you've ever known, if you've only, if you, uh, blah, 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 if you've only ever known one type of experience, it's very easy to project that onto the future, right? And just kind of say, well, that's all that there is because that's all that I've ever had. But that's not the case. Often we just experience the same thing over and over and over again, because we've never actually looked at what's going on within us to, 
you know, keep attracting the same experiences in. Um, so I feel like, again, not assuming that everyone is the same or that everyone's gonna do the same thing or act in the same way or treat you in the same way as the people before or as the experiences before, that things can be different. But first, that requires a, some sort of change in behavior. And it requires, you know, to really um, work on ourselves, not because we're not good enough or not because we need to change or because we aren't good enough as we are, but just because if we're wanting a different type of outcome and we're wanting a different type of experience, then that does that does mean that we have to do something differently ourselves, right? So I really think that, yeah, I think that you're really wanting something to be made right one way or another, depending, you know, again, regardless of which side you're on here or what, how this experience has played out for you, you're wanting it to be made right or you're wanting it to be made fair, um, wanting to clear your conscience, whatever it is. But I think to do that, that first requires owning up to it on both sides as well. Because like I said, takes two to tango, right? So it's not just going to be one person going, well, I've done all of these bad things and the other person going, I know, you know, you really hurt me and let me down. And, you know, in some cases that can happen, but nine times out of 10, it <laughs> two people did something that created the outcome. So it's about both people owning up to their sides of things, both people trying to understand where the other person's coming from and acknowledging what needs to change so that that situation doesn't play out the same way again. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there, but I am gonna move on to Pink Pile, which for some reason I've, gotten backwards <laughs> I don't know why I've done that maybe pink and rose are linked in some kind of a way you'll have to let me know um okay so first of all what's making you frown what is making you frown I feel like some of you guys are really putting a hell of a lot of pressure on yourselves um, and being quite hard on yourself as well. I think what's making you frown is this idea that you should have achieved more by now, that you should have achieved more success by now, that you should be doing better than you are, that you know, you, you, you're not doing as well as other people in your life and you could be doing a lot of comparing and comparison to other people that you're looking at around you and thinking, well, look at what they've achieved and why have I not achieved that, you know, and just being highly critical of yourself. Because I'm looking at this, right, and it doesn't look too bad because we've got the Three of Cups and the Nine of Cups, but this is what's making you frown. I think this is because this is what you don't have in your life, is this Nine of Cups, Three of Cups energy, which could be, for some of you, it could be something social as well, that you may feel like there's, you know, you don't, you're not where you would like to be in terms of your social life or, you know, in terms of fun. Maybe you're not having enough fun. Maybe um, maybe there's a particular person that you want to reconcile with, which would sort of link up with Rainbow, but not entirely. And the fact that that's not happened or happening is bringing you down. But I think for most of you, this really is about... you know, feeling this, you feel quite dissatisfied, I think, with your circumstances right now. And you're wanting that to change, but for some reason you feel like you can't get that to happen or you're telling yourself that you're not making that happen. And I think that's because you're being your worst critic right now. And you're telling yourself that either you're not good enough, you don't deserve it, you don't, you know, you're not worthy. And, and, you know, this doesn't have to be conscious. This could be something that's going off in your subconscious, which um, which may have been there your whole life and caused you to sabotage certain circumstances. But I just, I feel like this is more about success or you comparing yourself to other people in your life or other people your own age 
and just thinking, well, they've, they've got this experience and why hasn't that happened to me? And why have I not achieved that? I mean, look at how successful they are, you know, and, and maybe just doing that too much or comparing yourself. I mean, you should never compare yourself to other people. You really shouldn't because you can guarantee that there's thousands of reasons why you are where you are and why that person is where, where they are. And also, how do you know that the people you're comparing yourselves to aren't looking at you and doing the same thing <laughs> and kind of going, well, they've achieved this and they've got this in their life. Why hasn't that happened to me yet? You know, it might be in a different way about different things, but you don't know what other people are thinking when it comes to you. So I think what's bringing you down is the pressure that you're putting on yourself to have achieved more than what you currently are, you know, have already achieved or already have in your life. And I think that because you're doing that, it's kind of putting you in this discouraged energy where it's, it's keeping you down. It's keeping you down. It's actually preventing you from going after what it is that you want because you're telling us all you're doing is kind of telling yourself what you don't have or what you're lacking in your life or what you what hasn't worked out for you. And because you keep focusing on that, it's maybe depleting your energy and preventing you from actually making the changes that would align with you having those things in your life. Yeah, because look at this nine of cups. I mean, it's literally, it's literally a cup, right? And it emphasizes that success and that victory, but this is what's bringing you down. It's almost like, maybe, maybe for some of you, you're looking back at a time when you were successful or you felt more successful or you were achieving a lot at that particular point in time, but that's maybe not happening as much right now. You're you could be going through a phase where that's not occurring for you. And again, it could be just really weighing on you or pulling you down or just keeping you stuck in place. Um, but again, I mean, this takes me back to what I said at the, the very beginning, right? We're in very unusual circumstances and have been for quite a while now and we're still figuring it out we're all still figuring it out how we're going to get from point a to point b what we're going to do from here on out how things are going to land things still haven't really landed yet so we're still kind of on rocky ground but the good news is is that we're all in the same boat this time <laughs> there isn't just this isn't just happening happening to a select group of people while everyone else is just continuing to live a great life this has been something that's affected absolutely everyone and may, again maybe in different ways but it's still affected people and people have still been faced with you know a lot of issues and a lot of problems that they didn't think they would have to so my point being is that as much as you might look at other people and kind of go, well, look at that person's life. I mean, why doesn't my life look like that? Or why don't I have that in my life? Or why can't I do that and make it successful? You, you don't really know what's going on with that person. I mean, that person could have other things that they're contending with. Or again, because we live in the age of social media, you know, where everything looks amazing all the time. <laughs> and everyone's showing their fake best selves, you know, it's it's sending the wrong impression and it's giving off the wrong impression. It's, it's a false narrative that people buy into, right? And it's sort of prompting you not to do that. But essentially not to compare yourself at all to anyone because it's not a good idea. And like I said, you may have things in your life that other people are looking at and kind of going, well, I want that. And why, why am I not having that in my life? You know? So it's, it's a case of, I feel like you need to be reminded that you can have whatever this is that you want, whatever success that you're searching for, whatever kind of happiness that you're looking for in your life, you can absolutely have that, but you first got to talk yourself. You've got to talk to yourself differently and you've got to start changing the way you communicate with yourself. And you've, um, If you experience knockbacks in life or disappointments, then don't let that one knockback stop you from trying again. You know, 
these people that you may be looking at and kind of going, look at how successful they are, maybe they experienced several disappointments along the way before they got to that point that you didn't see but because they picked themselves up after the first disappointment and tried a different approach or tried things in a different way, that's how they got to where they are today, right? And that could be something that you need to be reminded of is that you may be seeing the end product of someone or the end product of someone's success or someone's happiness, but you didn't see what they went through to get to that point. And because you may have experienced your first knockback of something or your first disappointment of something, you're kind of thinking, well, this isn't working out for me. But actually, that person could have gone through the same thing. You just didn't see it at the time. So having more faith in yourself is definitely needed for you right now because you can absolutely have the, the success that you want to have. But I think you need to be patient with the process. I feel like there's something going on with immediate or instant gratification. You know, that idea that if I just do something now, tomorrow it will be successful. You Things need time to grow. And what, whatever that is, everything needs a different amount of time to get to where you want it to be, right? So consistent effort is the key to your success, right? <laughs> The key to your success, yeah, it's like, what is the key to my success? Where is that? Where does that lie? Who does that lie with? And I feel like, um, yeah, I just, I feel, I feel as well, I don't know why I want to say this, but I want to say just, um, you are the company that you keep. So I think in some ways it may be, um, important to just look at your social circles and make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people that do uplift you and believe in you and make a point of letting you know that <laughs> and um, people who encourage you because otherwise you may find that your circumstances reflect the exact thing that you're trying to avoid happening because there may be people who don't want you to succeed, who are jealous, who, who don't want you know, who can't be happy for you unless they're happy. The dream killers, my favorite phrase. Um, yeah, so just be aware of that. Um, because with that three of cups as well, I'm kind of getting this idea that maybe if your social circle was adjusted in certain ways, not entirely, obviously, unless you feel that's, that is necessary. Um, I feel like if you made a few changes that would dramatically change the way you look at yourself, which then would change how successful you become because of it's all linked, right? It's all linked. Um, but I feel like first of all, you've got to believe in yourself and you've got to, you've got to say nicer things to yourself, you know, and not focus on what you lack or see disappointments or setbacks as being unsuccessful but seeing them as just a part of the process because that's all they are so how do you turn that frown upside down you first got the king of wands which he is quite a powerful fiery creative king right he's very ambitious the king of wands very ambitious and then we've got lessons so yeah, I feel like um, seeing any kind of disappointments or setbacks as lessons, as a way to learn, as a way to um, change your approach or do things in a different way or to get creative, right? You might have to get creative in terms of how you make something happen, um, how you build something, how you grow something on your own, because this feels like a very personal project that you might wanna take on or that you're trying to develop for yourself or that you should develop if it's what you want to do. Because again, if this is, if you're trying to grow something or create something for yourself and you've had a few disappointments along, then I feel like you just need to, again, see these as opportunities to learn because that's all it is really, right? Is when we, when, when it doesn't go our, our way, we're still learning, we're still growing, we're still progressing. It's just an opportunity to, okay, say, say to ourselves, 
this hasn't worked, this this particular way of me doing things hasn't gone the way that I planned. Okay, so I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna keep to what I want. I'm gonna stick with what I want because I know I can do this, but I'm just gonna do it in a different way. I'm gonna try a different approach. It's just testing the waters until you find the strategy that works for you, until you find, you know, the way of going about things that not only interests you, but is also successful. So you've got Lizard as well, and to bring into balance, Lizard says a creative project. So some of you, this really is about something you're creating in your world as an individual. And again, you really have to believe in your own ideas for them to be successful. That's your first hurdle, right? It's believing in yourself. Once you've overcome that hurdle, if certain things don't go your way or they don't go as planned, to not see that as being a failure or see that as being something that you should completely leave behind and go in a different direction. To give up at the first hurdle is not the best approach. Um, but to understand that there's gonna be hurdles throughout making whatever you want happen in life. And it's just part of the process and you've just got to get creative with how you deal with the obstacles in front of you. Resilience, resilience. You're gonna experience a few knockbacks in life, but it's about not taking that as a sign that you're failing or that you're not doing as well as other people. When in fact, all those other people you're looking at have either been through the same process as you or are currently going through the same process. You just may not be able to see it because of that false narrative on social media, in the media, whatever it is, whoever it is that you're comparing yourself to. You just may, may not be able to see it because it's not being shown but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist and that doesn't mean it's not there. So yeah, I feel like you need more encouragement that you can uh, you can build something and grow something here. I think you also, again, pay more attention to who you're surrounding yourself with and make sure that, you know, you're dealing with people who do encourage you regularly rather than knock you back or bring out your insecurities. You know, people that poke at your insecurities need to go. They need to go because it's not their issue. It's sorry, it's not that it's not your issue that they, what am I trying to say? <laughs> totally lost my train of thought then. You get my point. Basically people that poke at your insecurities need to go um, for obvious reasons, obvious reasons. But yeah, you have a lot of different, because if look at all the color in the lizard card, right? There's so much color, so many ideas, so much creativity, but it's all been hidden away. It's all like blended in the background. It's like you haven't fully let your colors show and you could still be learning about what your colors are and what exists within you. And that's great. You should experiment. You should figure out what that is. But I think what you need to remember is not to get discouraged if certain things don't work out at particular times or to see that as, as um, a sign to just give up on it. You know, it's like, no, 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 no. Don't give up on what, what excites you. It's just, it's not always, um, you don't always see success straight away. You don't, it takes time. You've just got to keep going, keep trying different approaches, keep trying different ways and enjoy that process because that's you building and that's what you're going to remember. You're going to remember the process of building, not the outcome. Okay, so I'm going to move on to Rose Pile. So what's making you frown, first of all? What is making you frown? Well, yours I got pretty much straight away. Yours was such a clear message. And it's one of them subjects for me that just drives me mad. Not because of you, but because of other people, you know? Judgment, interference, what do other people think? What will other people think? That's what's making you frown. Why is this making you frown? It's making you frown because I think you're living your life in a way that will make other people happy, but not make you happy. You, there's something about you being watched and 
I just, I feel like there's a lot of eyes on you and a lot of expectation on you in some kind of sense. And it's that, it's, it's those, oh, okay, I'm going to come back to that. All these eyes on you and opinions being thrown at you. You should do things this way. You should do things that way. It's almost like the, the example they were giving me is it's like, think of colors. So you know that you should choose green. Green feels right to you. It feels like it's a fit for you. But other people around you are saying, you should choose yellow. You, know, you should choose yellow. That's the color for you. And you're like, inside you're going, no, it's green. I know it's green. But everyone else is going, no, it's yellow. <laughs> And because everyone else around you is saying yellow, you then say, okay, yeah, maybe they're right, it's yellow. But inside you're like, it's clearly green. And so what happens then is internally, you're, you're kind of in a war with yourself because you're not listening to yourself. You're listening to what other people say. There was an experiment done, wasn't there? And I can't for the life of me remember what experiment it was, what it was called, but there was an experiment done years ago and it was about peer pressure and the the um the power of peer pressure and they got a group of people in and um i can't even remember what it was i'm going to use colors as an example but it wasn't color i don't think so imagine a group of people five of them are actors and one of them really is there for but they don't know why they're really there. They think they're there for other reasons, but you know, they're kind of being masked from the true experiment. Someone puts a picture of the color green on the board, right? Those five actors are told they need to say that is yellow. Even though it's clearly green, they're told to say that color is yellow. Now, and they all do, right? They all say, that's yellow, that's yellow, that's yellow. And obviously this person that's there, <laughs> who hasn't, who isn't an actor, is looking at this picture going, that's clearly green. That's not yellow, that's green. But because everyone else in that room has said it's yellow, that person then says it's yellow, even though they know it's green. It's that type of situation where I feel like there's something going on where other people's opinions, judgments, are that significant in someone's life that it's making this person act out of character or it's making this person make decisions that they wouldn't normally make. Judgment with exhausted being here speaks for itself, right? I feel like there's something going on where someone's, someone is, yeah, someone is not making choices based on what they really want. They're making them based on what other people think they should do. And so their life is kind of out of alignment. Um, I also, yeah, I also feel, like I said, so, some of you are being watched. Because we've got two cards here that I associate with eyes. You've got the sun in the background, but it always looks like a giant eye to me. Every time I see it, I'm like, it's like, it's like being watched. And then the peacock, I know, I know they are feathers, but they look like eyes to me. And this peacock, it always just strikes me as it's not being its true self. This peacock is lying to itself, you know? It's almost like it's walking around and it has, it's emotionless. It's like it's wearing a mask. I mean, it would be a slightly strange if it was smiling. <laughs> I've never really seen a peacock smile. However, it just looks to me like it's someone who is wearing a mask because they're being watched or because they are being judged or criticized or someone's afraid of being judged and criticized. So they wear a mask that feels comfortable to everyone else but themselves. And so now there's this internal conflict going on because someone knows they're not doing what's best for them, that they're doing what's best for everyone else and that's draining their energy. And that could be what's making you frown. Could also be making you frown that other people are judging you and criticizing you, that people are kind of, 
you know, be, being very harsh on you, your time, your energy. And it's just, it's kind of just knocking away at your confidence, your self-esteem, your, your resilience. You know, your resilience may be kind of wearing thin right now because you've had to pick yourself up from a lot of judgment over a long period of time. And yet it's still happening. You could be dealing with some people who are quite relentless when it comes to their harsh words or criticism. Um, and yet there's some reason why you feel, you feel uh, tied to these people. Um, but I'm just thinking that you may actually be tying yourself to these people, that you actually have more freedom than you realize. Why do I say that? So you've got the five of wands here. So again, this is how to turn that frown upside down. Yeah. Okay, five of wands, how to turn that frown, frown upside down. First of all, get away from people that want to throw their opinions and judgments and criticisms at you. Take some time for yourself. We've got the divine masculine card here as well. Masculine energy, we all have masculine energy. It's very, it's very much about action. And I feel like what you need to do is stand up for yourself, primarily. Stand up for yourself, speak your truth, and be okay with the fact that that may stir up some resistance in other people. Be okay with the fact that occasionally you're going to butt heads with people, that you're going to upset certain people in life just by doing what you want to do. That just because that happens doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean that you're not doing what's right just because not everyone is agreeing with you. Um, essentially, stopping people pleasing and um, instead just doing what feels right to you, knowing that it may stir up a little bit of something within other people, but that that is not your responsibility. And it's not anyone else's right to decide what's best for you. That's completely your decision, your decision. And some people won't like it. Some people will throw a hissy fit. Some people will start conflict with you. They'll debate you, they'll argue with you. But you should not have to put your wants, needs aside just to keep other people calm. <laughs> that makes no sense, absolutely no sense. So to turn that frown upside down is to do what you want regardless of how other people are gonna react. And it's not to just discard other people's feelings, that's not what I mean. I mean, you know, you can still be nice about it and you can still be gentle about it and you can still be understanding and empathetic about it without completely self-sacrificing what you want. Again, you're not gonna be able to please everyone in life. You're not. Some people are gonna, gonna be unhappy no matter what you do and it's not your responsibility to just keep trying and exhausting yourself in trying to please those those people because some people can't be pleased. Some people can't be pleased. And again, that's not your problem. It's not your issue. That's something going on within them that they need to resolve, but they need to also choose to resolve it. And if they don't, again, not your problem, not your responsibility. So... <clears throat> I feel like you need to spend some time alone. You need uh, alone away from people that just want to dictate what you do. That is something that you really need right now. You need to remove yourself from people that create inner conflict for you. And you know, I'm not saying that in a way, if, if you're talking to someone and they give you a perspective that's different to yours, that creates a bit of internal conflict because it kind of makes you think that's okay, I think that's quite healthy. But this is not what I'm talking about. This is, these are people who make you doubt what it is that you want, that kind of try and talk you out of going after what it is that you want. So you say, I'm gonna use the same example, you say you want green and someone goes, green is a horrible color, why would you ever want green? Pick yellow. Pick yellow because I like yellow. <laughs> Pick yellow because that's what I would choose. You know, that is different than just someone saying, well, I can understand you 
liking green. I personally like yellow and this is why I like yellow. But I understand, you know, that's it's two different conversations. So I think that it's okay to hear out other people's opinions as long as other people's opinions don't become yours when it doesn't actually align with who you are. Um, so you need to spend some time alone to hear yourself think and to understand what it is that you want away from prying eyes, away from people that are just, you know, just watching everything that you do, every decision that you make and want to have their own input in everything that you do. You know, it's like every decision that you make, you could have people on your case telling you how you should do it, what you should do, you know, when, where, how, why. And to the point where it's not even your life anymore, it's someone else's. So yeah, I feel like you need to spend some time alone um, away from this because I, th I just feel like it's draining you. It's almost like you are living someone else's life. You're living in a way that pleases someone else or other people to avoid judgment or criticism or drama but maybe it's creating drama for you anyway because the thing is is that when we are out of alignment with ourself our life reflects that back to us it shows us in other ways by creating disturbance and creating um problems and turbulence and kind of you know <laughs> trying to get us to see that this is a reflection of what's going on inside of us. So it may be that in an effort to avoid drama, you've been people pleasing or just, you know, going with what everyone else wants or making decisions that other people would agree with. But as a result, it's actually had the opposite effect because what's happened is it's created a lot of internal conflict for you, which is then turned into external conflict with other people. Yeah, it's like the magician, right? It's the number one. What do you want to create? What do you want to make happen? What do you want for yourself? What kind of cake do you want to bake? <laughs> you know, because your favorite cake won't be someone else's favorite cake. And that's okay. That's life. We're all different. <laughs> So I feel like, yeah, you need, you need space away from people that try and kind of interfere with what you want for yourself in your life. You need that space to be able to do that and create, because it may be that other people are becoming almost like human shields from, you know, blocking you from your own success and from your own happiness and well-being. Um, you know, these people may not be intentionally doing this. Some might people like that do exist. Other people may be doing it unintentionally because they just want what's best for you, but they're not recognizing, well, what's best for you is not necessarily what's best for me. So, you know, I just feel like you need some, uh, some time apart from certain people in your life who are kind of um, all up in your business and trying to tell you what to do. Oh my God, yeah. If this is a relationship, some of you, this is a relationship, or again, it's relationships in your life. Look at this dynamic. I just wanna show you this because this is just, especially with what's come out afterwards as well. You've got this, this person here, ignore gender if the gender's not right for you, but you've got this person up here, look at them, right? They look incredibly spoiled. They look very materialistic. They look very, oh God, it's like one of those, it's like my worst nightmare, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's my worst nightmare. It's like a mean girl, you know, or um, someone who is just so superficial that it makes you sick inside. It's that type of a person. Now I'm not saying they're that bad, but this is an extreme interpretation. And look at this person in the background who's carrying the luggage, looking at this person going, I, and it gets me every time. They're doing like the eyebrow raise, you know, like, what are you, why am I doing this for you? It's like, why am I 
Why am I carrying all your bags for you when you've got two hands yourself to carry them if you needed to, but you know, you're just too good for that apparently. You know, it's, I'm sorry, it's just this card gets me. So I feel like um, some of you are dealing with people like this who you've had to put your dreams, your desires in the background. You've been pushed into the background to support someone else's or to keep someone else happy. No, <laughs> no, this is not okay. Two of wands, look at this, right? It's like you've had something who that's kind of got its grip into you and it's just dictating what moves you can and can't make in your life. And it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying it you need to detach from whoever or whatever that circumstance is for you and give yourself, it's basically like you need to drop the bags, right? You need to drop the bags and go off and do your own thing. Let this person carry their own baggage, right? Maybe that's what it is. Let this, let someone carry their own baggage because it's not yours to carry. Um, because you've got a life to live right? You've got a life to live and you can't do that if you're forever taking into account, maybe not just one person, but several people's wants, desires, expectations. That's not what you're here to do. You've got your own purpose. You've got your own plans, your own ideals that you'd like to achieve, but you can't do that with these people or this person that's just like, carry my bags, exhaust yourself trying to you know, heal me or work around me. No, you're your own person and you deserve a chance to just explore whatever that means to you. I'm getting quite passionate about yours, <laughs> but it drives me mad. I don't like, I don't like it when people just essentially are that selfish. We can all be selfish, right? We all have the capability of being selfish, but when you're that selfish, that someone believes that their, especially in, in any kind of relationship, when someone thinks that their needs, their wants, their desires are much more important than someone else's, and they, they have such a lack of awareness that they don't see how their actions could potentially be making someone else feel. Yeah, you need time and space alone to just do you. <laughs> you need some time away. Um, yeah, because look what listening to other people is doing to you. Eight of Swords, it's getting you all up in your head and it's making you question everything about yourself. Um, yeah, and question what you're capable of and what and it's, I just feel like it's making you unhappy. It's just really dragging you and it's making you frown. It's making you frown. And it's not okay. I'm just here to point that out to you. It's not okay. And it's, it is okay for you to take time and space away for yourself and for you to do what's best for you for a change. When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you did anything that was just for you, that you where you didn't have someone else in mind? And if you can't remember, <laughs> that's probably a sign, you know, that it's that it's time to make these changes. Even if it means you receive some backlash from other people, it's worth it. They'll calm down, they'll get over it. They'll have to adjust. They'll have to adjust. If people have been depending too much on you in life, they're gonna have to adjust and start taking more responsibility for their own happiness and well-being. You'll actually be doing them a favor you'll be teaching them something. They may not see it that way at first, but you are, you or you will be. Yeah, it's time to step out on your own, right? <laughs> Nine of Wands, it's time to take a step to, again, do something for you. Do some, it's nine as well, and nines are very independent energy, so I just feel like it's time to do something for you that doesn't involve certain other people in your life that seem to think that your life is supposed to make them happy. I don't know. I don't I don't know what to tell you about people like that. I don't I don't know. 
Yeah. I think you're about to go off on a new adventure. But this, you know, this may be quite difficult for you. It may be quite difficult to do because you don't want to hurt anyone. But I'm, <laughs> this is the thing. You might have to. And not intentionally. Not because you want to, but because it's just, it's life. We do things and we do our best, but it's not always... It's not always good enough in other people's eyes. But again, that's not your responsibility. Your job is not to be here to live your life in a way that makes everyone else happy. That's not your role here. Your role is something very, very different. And I think, you know, you obviously know that because inside you're very torn up. You've got like a, a knot in your belly, you know, that's kind of, it's, you're, it's like you've been trying to be happy with doing things this way, but it's not. It's not satisfying you because you know you should be doing something else or you know you should be living in a slightly different way to how other people want you to live. Um, and I think it's just you've not wanted the conflict or the drama and you've been maybe trying to keep the peace um, or just not wanting to let anyone down. But because of that, you've, you've not been happy. So yeah, I think it's time for you to be a bit selfish now. Permission to be selfish. Permission to do what you need to do at this point, away from what other people tell you you should be doing or what other people expect from you. Let them pick up their own damn baggage. <laughs> They're more th this person's more than capable, as is everyone else that you may be dealing with, more than capable. Um, and it's time to just you know, go after what you want for a change. Okay, I'm going to stop rumbling now and leave it there. But I hope you all have a good day and I will speak to you again soon. Bye.